morning, everyone. My name is Trinise Bryant. I will be introducing our guest speaker this morning. Thank you so much for joining us today. I am very pleased to introduce our longtime friend of the MCA, Jane Gilbert. As most of you know, Jane has served in many important leadership roles here in Miami, including founding two thriving organizations, creating and leading multiple public-private partnerships, and serving as City of Miami's first Chief Resilience Officer, to name just a few. We asked Jane to join us once again because of some very exciting breaking news. Welcome, Jane Gilbert. <laughs> Thank you. It is a pleasure to be here, and I and, and congratulations on your role as co-chair with the Miami Climate Alliance. That's a great addition. I was very excited to hear that. So thank you again for allowing us to, um, to for us to, for you to be here. So let's just jump right into these questions because I'm excited to hear what you have to say, uh, the answers to all of my questions that I have for you today. So, so Jane, by now many of us have read the local and national media coverage about you becoming the world's first chief heat officer. Wow, that is great which is such a welcome news giving that we're all feeling the heat here in Florida that grows harder every day. But we also know that Miami faces many, many urgent threats and challenges, right? Why is heat suddenly our focus now here in Miami? Great question and an important one. And, and, and I would say, you know, our our mayor, Daniela Levine Cava, has many priorities right now. I mean, obviously, COVID recovery being a big overarching one, um, but, but climate is something that has been uh, one of the reasons she ran, uh, and climate equity in particular. And so the the, the issues of heat, I mean, Miami's always known heat, right? But I did some research when, when I started um, looking into this role and, and I personally had felt that Miami's gotten hotter since I moved here in 1995. But when I looked it up, it actually has, there's been 27 more days of days over 90 degrees since 1995, 26 years ago. And that's, that's really gonna in, continue to increase. And the other thing that's gone up is our humidity. Our average humidity has also gone up. So the two together make our heat index, which is where health risks really come in, uh, more vulnerable. And then the third factor is that our average lows at night are going up very high. And that's where also, particularly our most disadvantaged populations have increasing risks of heat. And so, so we're expecting a tenfold increase in the number of days with a heat index, a dangerous extreme heat index of 105 or more by mid-century. We could have, close to three months of days at that level by then. So we really need to prepare. And, and what, what drew me to this work at this time is one, the amazing work of many people on this call today around raising the issues broadly of climate change, but particularly of heat related to our most vulnerable populations and how the intersection of those issues with basic equity issues around housing, workforce, workplace safety, and, um, and, and carbon mitigation um, and the importance of that. There, there's some of the solutions to addressing heat address all of those other issues. And so, and, 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 and so that's what drew me to this role and why I think Mayor Daniela Levine Cava felt like now was the time. There was momentum largely driven by the people on this call, right? And our university partners. And, um, and 
it, I think, has the potential to enlarge in the tent of people concerned around climate and equity issues. I think that's also why I think it's important. Frankly, the title is not what excites me, <laughs> even though the media seems to be very excited about it. What excites me is uh, the chance to bring together, you know, elevate the work that, that's being done on the ground and, and get some action moving forward. Thank you for that, Jane. So we hear that um, you will be joined by our much loved friend and ally, Dr. Cheryl Holder. Y'all, let's give Dr. Cheryl Holder a shout out. Yay! Yes, Woo! yes. Well, Dr. Cheryl Holder will be co chairing our region's first health heat task force. Oh, I'm excited about that. I am so excited about that. What expertise and skill set will will each of you bring to the efforts of, oh my God, of this newly created task force? Have you worked together before? My question is, have both of you worked together before? I haven't, but I've worked, I've heard of um, Jane's work for since, you know, she's been around for a long time and I've been around for a long time. I'm much newer to the climate and health in the field, about five years. Um, because of my patients and the concerns my patients have been bringing to me and seeing the effects day to day of my patients in Dade County is when I got really much more involved in the climate world and seeing what could happen in the future. And now after coronavirus, I'm even more ready to take on the battle because too many of us have passed and it's the same population that is incredibly vulnerable. So I am very excited to work with Jane and we'll see, and we're gonna, well, we need the community, just you guys, we can't do this alone. We need the political will, we need the dollars and we need the activism and we don't have forever. And this is such an opportunity to change how we deliver health, how we define health. So it, it extends beyond what happens to us physically because we know what happened to us physically happened because of our zip code so much more. And that zip code, we ended up in these zip codes, not by chance, but by policy. So we must bring policy and we must bring health actions and education and we will make that change. Wow, thank you for that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's a blessing that we have two powerful, two powerful people in the community to, to be holding down these positions. I am so excited about what's gonna happen for our community with the two of you here. Wow. So let's go to my next question. Um, Jane, so as you know, the MCA has worked hard to demand accountability and equity across all taxpayer funded efforts to address our climate crisis. And we are proud to have played a role in securing more than 60, 60 local legislative wins since our founding in 2015. How can MCA and its many active member organizations best support your efforts to address the very impacts of heat on our most vulnerable communities. I would like to hear from Jane and you, Dr. Holder, too, um, also, okay? Yeah, and, I, and, and before that, I just want to say that when Mayor Kava reached out to me about this initiative and the idea of putting together a heat health task force, I said, I can't do this without someone with the on the ground, real world experience with the health expertise. And I said, my first choice is Dr. Cheryl Holder. I don't know if she'll, she'll pick it, if she'll, she'll accept it, but she was my absolute first pick and the first person that came to mind. She's the absolute right person. Um, so thank you, Cheryl, for, for, uh, agreeing on this. I am also really excited about that. So as Cheryl mentioned, the, you know, we need, we need a lot of work done and uh, we can't lose time and it's not going to help without a significant amount of advocacy and, and the Miami Climate Alliance has, has this amazing track record. And really, um, many of the policies you already elevated are the ones that we're going to be focusing on. The issues of heat uh, address 
how we you know need to be addressed where we live how where we work how we move around and how we respond to major disasters and so in the areas of how we live we've got so much substandard housing in and and many people with as a result of substandard housing paying exorbitant costs for air conditioning or may have inadequate air conditioning and so we need to work hard on expanding our weatherization programs expanding our housing retrofit programs making sure people have access to safe healthy efficient air conditioning um, that they have access to cooling in the event of an extended widespread power outage. Um, and we want to come up with as holistic solutions for that as possible, including tree canopy, maybe, maybe fruit trees that also address some of the other social determinants of health that Cheryl can speak so eloquently about. Um, and, and so that's the housing piece. Um, Sec, and you have already been elevating those policies as part of your platform. In the worker, and Trenice, you're going to be my ally on this, but um, and many others, but in the workplace, we have many outdoor workers in greater Miami, at, in the agricultural area, in construction, in kids playing outside with adults with them, with, with, um, uh, even public safety professionals, you know, there's landscapers, there's, there's many professions. Unfortunately, you know, that those kind of regulations are regulated at the national level with uh, OSHA, Occupational Safe and Healthy Administration, but there's a lot we can do locally to make sure our employers are aware of what's required, aware of what's best practice, and given the tools and resources, and that we follow up and help with enforcement and make sure that that's happening on the ground. So there are things we can do locally. That's the work, how we move. So, you know, we want to prioritize walking, biking, using transit. You can't do any of that if we're not addressing the tree canopy and the coolness of our right of ways with with the bus stops being cooling, the 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 you know sidewalks right away is, and making transit more efficient and accessible. Um, so that's that's the the move. And finally, respond and 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 probably the most critical to life safety is how we respond in the event of major disasters, particularly a, a widespread. Um, power outage, whether it's from a hurricane or some other, we need to make sure that we have places to cool off, whether it's inside a multifamily building or a place people can walk to, to cool off and um, be safe. And that's also part of that is building our social networks, our citizen emergency response teams on the ground to know so that so that our on the ground people know who to check on, make sure that whatever elderly who, who may not be able to walk to that cooling center, right? Or even know that there's a place they can cool off in their own building, that they, they get access to that because their neighbor's thinking about them. So those are some of the things that um, we're gonna be um, elevating and definitely gonna need your uh, support in helping to do that. Dr. Holder, you wanna chime in just for um, for two minutes. Oh, she may have had to. Okay, she might have left. Well, um, so I have one more question for you. This is my last question. Um, for um, if there were an action film made about Miami's epic struggle to strive off worse impacts of climate change, which actor should star in the role of Chief Heat Officer Jane Gilbert? And if this actor was to shadow you for a week, what real life experiences other than wing, weight training, boot camp, of course, 
will you most quickly acclimate her to rigors of the role? So think about that. Think about who would be best to play you. So first, I'm not much of a movie watcher, but uh, but you know, I, I don't think of this as, as singular superheroes. I think of this as a team effort. And so Cheryl's part of that team and you're all part of that team. And we're going to be doing that boot camp together and that weight training. We might need to do some yoga and meditation and connecting with nature to make sure we're all aligned and, and doing our, seeing our purpose together. Um, and, and in terms of following me, it's a, it's about how do we listen to each other? How do we make sure we get some priorities and then, and then keep that laser focus on getting action. And, uh, I'm going to let Cheryl also answer because she's going to be my, my (laughs) co-star. And so I'm, I'm curious if you have an actor. actor. You know, for me, Angela Bassett, I just love her. Thank you, Angela. We can do the team, but give me Angela. <laughs> you got her. Yeah, got her. But, but definitely the team and all the positions out here. And uh, I see in the chat some comments. Charlie Theron, Thera- Charlie, Charlie Theron. I think that's a good choice for for Jane. And um, definitely, it's a team. And definitely we want to train the community even much more so than us, but we want the community as educated in what's happening to them and what they can do about it. Um, Just like I tell my patients, I'm here to empower you and help you make decisions. I can't make them for you and I don't want you just to comply. I'm not here to give you orders. I want you to figure out how you're going to adhere and you're going to make decisions that's in your best interest because then you take that to the next generation and to the rest of the community. So yeah, we're all going to have a lot of Charlie Theron's and Angela Bassett's running around and all the other actors that I don't know, but definitely will be there. I see a lot of things about um, screens as a great policy. I agree, the heat, the climate, the screen is a low hanging fruit because if we could stop all these mosquitoes from coming in because poor people really can't run that AC all day. So they're gonna open some windows, open some doors and we don't need mosquitoes coming in. So there's so much we can do together and we want the community to drive what they feel is most important. Not top down, but the community says screens what we want now, our trees what we want next. And if you're gonna give me trees, give me some money for landscaping because trees are growing faster than ever. So there are things that we have to come together and do, but great questions. I'm gonna go think about it some more. (laughs) Maybe we have the next Black Panther type movie, but it's all about the environment and how we overcame in Miami. I like that. That I like that too. I'm gonna hold you to that. So we're gonna invite you again back because we're gonna have scene two to this actor's conversation. And then the next time- What's your role, Trudy's? Oh God. (laughs) Okay, so my role, um, the person that I, if if it was me, if somebody needs to um, play me would be Tasha Smith. No, you gotta tell me who Tasha Smith is, but you can tell me later. (laughs) Tasha Smith played on, she was the young lady that played on Why We Got Married, one of Tyler Perry films. Yeah. She was a beautician. Yes, yes, yes. She was a beautician because I think me and Tasha have a lot of characteristic traits in the roles that she played in because Tasha Smith, she commands the room. Like when she gets in a room, she commands it just, just by her presence. And I think for me, I do the same thing. I, I, that's like one of my alter egos, her and Nene Leakes. <laughs> definitely Nene Leakes. I'm definitely a Nene Leakes person. But we will definitely do this again. We want to invite you to our next Thank meeting you. again so we can do phase two of this actor's thing, maybe come out with a uh, Panther, um, Black Panther movie from um, Climate Change. I just want to thank both you and Jane for your time of being here out of y'all, all of y'all busy schedule. I know it's the weekend. I know you could be doing a whole lot of other things, but be here talking to us, but you chose to be here and we are pleased, please, please from the MCA. We are pleased to have you with us today. 
Thank you. You're welcome. Thank yes, thank um, you for inviting us. I, I, uh, it, it is, I do, I, I look forward to everybody's role in this movie because we, we, we all have our strengths and we all need our roles. <laughs> we need, we need everyone. <laughs> yeah.